interesting with these markets, folks, because investors, you know, they're gearing up for the release of the December jobs report. If people have jobs, they're going to go spend money. Well, economists expect the economy added 190,000 jobs last month. The unemployment rate expected to hold steady 4.1 percent. Let's bring in there to talk about the bigger story. Economist Peter Morisi is here. He's also a professor at the University of Maryland. And Doug Flynn, a certified financial planner and co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management, is here. Guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, Peter, I want to talk to you about this jobs report because, you know, we, look, we added, we think about 2 million jobs in 2017. You know, we just hit 25,000 on the markets yesterday. The economy seems to be firing on all cylinders. Do you think that those same drivers are going to go into 2018, Peter? Well, the drivers will be strong. They'll be a little bit different. I'm expecting, for example, housing to be stronger, and I'm expecting investment because of the tax cut to be stronger. Uh, consumers will likely take a quarter off like they did last year. But I think after that, we could continue to see 3% uh, growth for three quarters as we did this year and overall come out about the same as this year, which means more profits, a stronger market, and so forth. You know, it's interesting, Doug, because I was looking at, the, you know, the, the run-up of these markets. I mean, we hit, we hit a historic mark yesterday uh, with the Dow. That was the fastest 1,000-point gain in Dow's history ever since the index was created. Markets, of course, as we can see, the 73rd, you know, record close under President Trump we had yesterday. Uh, that's the political side. That's the optimistic side, Doug. That's sure. the emotion. Do you see that, though, yeah. in the numbers? Uh, we do. I think that the GDP is is improving. Uh, the jobs picture is improving. Uh, you still have a great backdrop. Uh, last year's momentum is carrying into this year. There's no reason why it can't continue. Now, look, when you've had years of 25 percent or more in the Dow, it, it is followed on average with a, an adjustment of between 8 to 11 percent. That's been what has happened the last you know, 10 times on average. But those are just opportunities to get back in if you've been sitting on the sidelines. A lot of people have actually been leaving the market, the average investor. They're not, they're not even really participating as much as you might think they are. So there is a lot of opportunity, and the backdrop is still very good into 18 as it improves. You know, that's, a, that's kind of disappointing, Peter, to hear that, that so many Americans still are not participating in what could have been an amazing growth of their own incomes if they had looked at stocks. But they were scared, of course, after the Great Recession, Peter. That makes sense. Uh, but at at the same time, you know, we have to watch for the, for the wages listing and the jobs report this morning because we have seen somewhat tepid wage growth, Peter. Do you think that that's going to get better? Well, we are seeing signs that wage growth is improving in cities with tight labor markets, for example, Minneapolis being one that was recently cited. And I think we can see more of that. But it's not just tightness in the labor market, you know, the availability of workers. It's the fact that productivity growth is now starting to kick up. You really can't pay people more unless you can charge higher prices, and international competition keeps you from doing that most of the time, or you get more productivity out of the workers that you have. And we're starting to see a lot more of that. So I, I think that's very positive. You know, it's funny. When you ask people about the economy, they say, it's good. When you ask them about the stock market, they say, I'm staying out. I blame some of this on the hysterics from the left and w the stuff we see in the media. You know, this says that, you know, Trump is going to, you know, tank the economy and this and that. And it sort of scares people about putting their nest egg in. That's a terrible mistake. I don't know anybody that can time the market. I don't know anybody who knows someone that can time the market. <laughs> people just shouldn't be doing that. They should just be putting some money in their IRAs and Keos every month. Yeah, and that's the thing, Doug. I mean, that's obviously great advice, but at the same time, why is that fear still out there with the average American? Why are they still afraid you to know, get into and, this market? And Peter may uh, appreciate this. I, I, do you know that only 22 states require an economics course in high school and, yeah. and only yeah. 17 require a personal finance course? And I think that some of that basis when you're younger that you could learn would help you as you go into not everybody goes into economics and finance like we did right. in in college so and what more do you need to know about about your own personal situation throughout your life mm. than some of those things so so i think it's a little bit of uncertainty and and, yeah. and lack of knowledge in that area and maybe a disbelief but uh, you, we, we strip all that away, yeah, and look at the fundamentals, and the fundamentals are very strong. Yeah, they, are, they really are. Maybe the message will get out there. Peter, really quick before I let you go, big change coming later this month. Uh, Janet Yellen's going to be saying adieu. We're going to have Jerome Powell. Uh, how do you feel about the changeover? Are you bullish? Well, I think we're going to have continuity. So in the near term, I'm confident. Longer term, I question whether a lawyer can handle a crisis, for example, in the manner of an Alan Greenspan or a Ben Bernanke. Yellen didn't have a crisis to handle, so we'll never know. 
But, you know, the notion that he was over there for a couple of years and did a lot of reading and can now guide the Federal Reserve would be the equivalent of making me a clerk at the Supreme Court for a couple of years and then, say, appointing me as a justice. I'm kind of skeptical about how he's going to manage a crisis. I think he'd make a great uh, Supreme Court justice, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> Peter, Doug, gentlemen, thank you so much for getting up so early.